Hello vinyl record collectors. Today I'd like to show two groups from my record collection. The first will be the Yardbirds and the second will be the Standells. Starting with the Yardbirds, the Yardbirds originally formed in 1963 over in England and uh, one thing that's well noted with the Yardbirds is that at one time or another during the course of the band's um, to being together and doing concerts and recordings, they had three of the five top guitar players as rated by Rolling Stones magazine. Of course, that would be uh, Jack Beck and um, as well Eric Clampton and Jimmy Page. It was Eric Clampton who was the original guitar player with the group. And then uh, the first album was released in 1965, For Your Love. And it's on the uh, Epic label. I've got you have the record inside there. I'll just pull that out. For Your Love topped at number 96 on the ch charts in the United States. Lots of good songs on here, of course, For Your Love is the main one, but um, quite a few others as well. After a while, uh, Eric Clampton was sort of unhappy with the sort of the commercial aspect of the group and decided to leave. So he was replaced by Jeff Beck, who then took over lead guitar. The next um, album that they put out, also in '65, having a rave up with the Yardbirds. It's also on the Epic label. Top that number 53 on the Billboard charts. Then in '66 they released the um, it's uh, Roger the Engineer. This was on the Columbia label. This this is about UK pressing, Columbia EMI. So at one point, Jeff Beck fifth, um, had an illness and had to be hospitalized for a short time. So at that point in time, uh, Jimmy Page took over and uh, did the guitar work. Actually, I think Jimmy Page initially uh, replaced a different member. Um, I think it was um, Paul Samuel Smith, who was a bass guitarist, who quit the band. And then when he quit the band, I think it was Jimmy Page came on and started playing bass originally. And then when Jeff Beck uh, fell, fell ill and had to leave the group for a short time, Jimmy Page took over playing the uh, lead guitar. The next album to come out, Over Under Sideways, also on the Epic, just charted at number 52, 1966. Jess Boogie is on this one, of course, well known uh, tune by Jeff Beck, plays quite often uh, when he's on uh, his solo, so, doing his solo career. Then the uh, last album, 1967, is Little Games. It's charted at number 80. That was on Epic Line. Well, this is a Canadian pressing, so it's on the uh, capital EMI. And one of the things to know that this makes this particular copy a little bit collectible is that on the back, manufacturer is spelt wrong. So this will probably be the first pressing when it was released with a spelling mistake here in Canada. It got corrected, of course, subsequent pressings. In 1966, the Yardbirds was the opening act for the Rolling Stones when the Rolling Stones went on tour. Finally, in uh, 1968, the Yardbirds uh, played their final gig, and at that point, they broke up. Of course, Jimmy Page went on to go to Led Zeppelin, and two other members of the band uh, formed the band Renaissance. So the Standals were first formed in Los Angeles, California, around 1962. In 1964, they got a recording contract with Liberty Records, put out uh, three singles, I think. 
which had no success. Liberty also put this album out, Live in Persons at PJs. Don't think it had too much success. The band here is mostly uh, uh, covering songs like, that are big hits at the time. Louie Louie, Money, That's What I Want. Uku Padu, which is, I know mostly from my container do our Turner doing that one. Then the uh, Standells got a contract uh, with, us with Columbia through their their tower subsidiary, and the first album uh, they put out there was um, Dirty Water, which came out in 1966. And Dirty Water itself, uh, I think, well, this this came on round number 11 on the charts. A lot of success with that song, Dirty Water, which was written by, um, I think it was their uh, producer, Ed Cobb, and it's in reference to where he went to Boston and was robbed while standing on a bridge over um, the Charles River. The next one up uh, from 1966, I think, is Why Pick On Me? And on the tower label, with this I think finished number 54 on the charts at each uh, size point. So here, Paint It Black is on here, which obviously is the Rolling Stones too. So again, they're, they're covering other uh, people's songs is on this one. So the, uh, Stendhal's Elkhorn is a very good garage band. If you're into 60s garage music, that's definitely one of the groups you would have to look up. Next one, Hot Ones. Number 33 on the charts. So a lot of current uh, cover like the Beatles, uh, Elmer Rigby, The Trog's Wild Thing, Donovan, Sunshine, and Superman. So, um, a lot of cover tunes on this one. This is on the Spartan label. This is a Canadian pressing. Uh, next one, try it in 1967. It's actually still in the shrink wrap. Got the original price still on it. I don't think this one charted. I'm not sure. I don't know if it reached on the charts. Uh, 99 and a half, I think that's probably the CCR uh, hit right there. As well as recording albums, they did a little bit of television. I think they were on the uh, episode of the Munsters TV. They also um, showed up on movies. Get yourself a college girl. I showed this one on the Nancy Sinatra video I made because Nancy Sinatra was an actress in this film. But they. Um, the Standells are one of the bands that appear in that film. We also saw this one, Riot on Sunset Strip. This is actually a very good album. Uh, we've got um, a few other groups on here too, like the Chocolate Watch Band is on here. Uh, so this is a very strong album. If you see this album at a vinyl show, flea market, and it's relatively cheap, uh, cheap, pick it up. It's excellent garage music on this one. And that's pretty much it for uh, the Standells. So thanks very much for watching, and have a good day.